The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648, and the author of the opening called Daily Newsletter. Hey, look at this. <clears throat> We're looking at the dollar down 0.36. In the Chapman Wave methodology, let me just show you this. This is for um, anyone new to my notations. We make it as simple as possible. In the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for the lowest, most identifiable low bar, and you want to count each successively higher peak and alphabetize them on the way up with an uppercase uh, letter going from an A to a G, seven peaks. Within that context, it's the fourth highest peak, peak D. A is the first, B is the second, C is the third, and D is the fourth. Where other things can happen, I'll show you in a moment exactly what I mean by other things can happen. You could you could pull back sharply, you could have just a momentary digestive phase, or you could recycle within three bars to the upside, which portends the chance of having a brand new buy mode going four peaks higher. So it's really important. I only look at three patterns, straight down, straight up, that's one. Arch formation, or it could be an inverted V, but you're going from the left side low, up, arching over, coming back and retesting that. You take it out. That's why it's red. It's pretty negative, unless there are certain conditions that are met to reverse to the upside immediately. On the green side, you've got the cup formation, number two. Sorry, number three. And that green says if you take out the left side high in a certain manner, you can go quite a bit higher. So you've got straight line, arch or cup. One, two, three, or you've got a combination, and that's called what I call the dreaded H or an arch formation that fails the left side low, takes it out, and keeps going down. Or on the other side, you've got a straight line, and then it makes a cup formation, takes it out. The best one out of the uh, Y formation, this is the inverted Y, is when the price takes out the left side high in a peak a leg C, B or C, which portends a chance to go even higher, to straight up, I call, I call it a Chapman wave, cup and ladle, because it looks like a ladle. It just goes straight through. There's no handle. The handle is this ladle that keeps going higher until it makes at least a D, usually makes it an E, and then it pulls back and it retests the left side high. Okay. That's about as simple as I can make it. Within that, we've got a plethora of other techniques that I use, but we'll deal with one thing at a time. We're looking at from the peak E at 98.68 on the 1st of August, the dollar comes back down to 97.03, trough B, call them troughs on the downside with lower cases, and then it starts an A, B, and then because it took out that previous high of 98.68, and we're looking at 99.23 on the XAL. It has been stuck. And when you think that crude oil has been at the lower end of its range and the XAL just can't get out of its own way, I, I'm, that's another reason why I'm a little concerned about this market. Not all the little ducks are sitting very nicely here. Look at this. The IYT, the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average uh, Index Fund, trading way down, also making this little double bottom type thing, trying to trying to rally. It's up dollar fifty five at one eighty point two two today. This is not a great sign. That two hundred period exponential moving average in the weekly at one seventy three point forty. That to me looks very much like it wants to be in play, like it wants to come down and retest that. Maybe even go down below it for a moment. I'm watching this very, very, uh, very closely. All right, everything's back working good. Let's just keep going. So I'm going to just do a real quick review, uh, just because you saw the charts, but you didn't hear it. Let me just show you this again. Uh, let me go back. Um, yeah, let me just see if I can get it in order right here. Um, yeah, so let me do this. I'm going to go from the SMHs. I'm just going to show you what I'm looking at, that 
The MACD is trying to turn up, but it hasn't crossed positive. The stochastic is only at 46%, 48%. And every time it's flattened out like this, that's when you've got that arch formation and the pullback. So I'm, I am considering that um, we're looking at for subscribers. And let me do this in Chapman Wave notation so you can see it a little bit better. This is green. This is red. And this is called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. So within the arch the declining whoops within the declining cone formation lower highs and much lower lows you've got a barrier right here and it's been struggling to get above it i'll be right back dows of 171 pounds of chapman tiger conditions hour we'll be right back and i'll take your questions i've got a couple of emails come in and i'll get to those Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So we have a little audio glitch. So let me just do a little recap. So I was showing when we came on air that I'd already got a peak D in the Chapman Wave two-minute chart. It made this little cup formation failure pattern. See the way the MACD uh, deflected low? See the way you briefly went to 80% and then broke down? Um, that's a negative. So you've gone from the high of 2948.25 to where we are 10 points lower right now. And you've got a peak D. And I see that the uh, down arrow at this point is a sell signal, but we won't get a sell uh, mode until we're down below the 2936 area, probably in the 2935 area, because you have to wait for these moving averages to also cross negative. So these are really important, the fourth highest peak. Okay, that's number one. Number two is, just on the recap, I was looking at the SMHs and I showed, I drew this in. It's called the Chapman Wave Inside, another technique that I've developed over the many years I've been doing this, the Inside Track 
repellent zone. And once again, we've seen that the uh, SMHs once, twice, three, four times have been repelled right on that line going to the green line, which is the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. That's, that's the other thing. The weekly chart, the technicals are kind of okay. They're not great. And the price is good. Uh, but believe me, you don't want by Monday or Tuesday to see this down at the 117 area again, because this time I think if it starts to break below 117, that's going to go quite a bit deeper. Okay, so that's the SMHs. Then I want you to just quickly do the TLT, which I haven't done. This reverse is the H pattern that we were talking about, the pattern that I spoke about in the Chapman Wave methodology. This is another pattern that we just got to monitor closely because if bonds start to pull back at 141.84, they start to go to the 139.50 or lower area, you've got a good chance that you're making another arch formation with very poor technicals. The technicals aren't anywhere close as where they were right at the top when you went to 148.90 on the 28th of August. So let's just watch that. Okay. Now, the other thing is this, that if bonds are pulling back, what's gold doing? Well, gold, if yields are go rallying at this particular point, gold is down 11.74, but stuck in the range. It isn't breaking down. So let's just go through the three, three, three things that I like to talk about. One is that the dollar represents the Harley Davidson of the economy of the United States of America. Not the Harley, the company, just the icon of Harley around the world. Motorbikes, it's American motorbike. Okay, so that's the dollar because it is still holding really well after being talked down, talked down, talked, just ignores it. And so far, it's held very nicely, number one. Number two is um, within the context of yields, uh, I was talking to someone who's probably one of the, the one of the one of the bond gurus. Uh, certainly, the company that he's with is uh, considered one of the one of the one of the great bond companies in, in the country. Um, and we were just talking about this and saying, you know, what can the Fed do? Uh, you know, the Fed, uh, the Fed's kind of stuck with the international aspect of lower rates, and yet within the economy, there's some good things going on. They kind of stuck. So rates can bounce a little bit here, but I think they're in a range, and we discussed that. And yeah, they're pretty much in a range. They're going to be bouncing around. I don't think they're going to break to the lows of 14.29 anytime soon, but I'm not sure yet whether they're going to break above 19.03. That's a big range, but we can be stuck in that range for a little while longer. Okay, so I've got all that out the way. I discussed crude oil, better hold the 40 or 49 area, otherwise it's in real trouble. Now this is the issue that I wanted to get to. So for subscribers last weekend, I showed them and I did a real detailed report on this is what I show my subscribers every day. I hope I can find that chart. I'm sure I kept it here. It's this one right here with the arrows. Can I find the one with the arrows? Let's just see if it's this one, this one, or that one. Okay, I'm getting it. Is that it? I'm going to give this one a chance. No. Let me give this one a chance. No. Let me give this one a chance. Yes. No. Oh, man, I think I must have just taken it off because, oh, well, there it is. So last weekend for my Monday morning uh, opening call for my subscribers, I sent out Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, I always send out charts over the weekend for Monday in preparation. People like to look and kind of the people who study Chapman Wave like to do this in great detail and other people they can just take the headline of my Traders Corner every morning and just read that opening paragraph. It sums things up as quickly as I can for people in a hurry. So I showed this arrow and I said, if the low of August the 8th, which had a big candle, it was a uh, um, um, Marabosa candle, and this Marabosa candle right here where it has no wick, I, I said it's Marabosa-ish or type because it wasn't exactly, it did have a little bit of a wick, but it said, it went up from the low that was made in August at 25,440. August the 7th, it runs up and goes to about 26,426, I think it was. And then it pulled back very sharply. And then it had one little spike that went to a phenomenal new high. Maybe that's the one that went to 26,426. And then it plunged to a lower low. Look at exactly what's going on. I said, we've got the turnaround candle. This is the Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's a green candle. It's a good candle. It says you can go up, but beware if you come back and test halfway into the wick at any point because you're going lower. It's exactly what happened here. And then what happened is we had this big green kind of Marabosa candle of last Friday. 
I see there could be kind of a, a, a small candle and then a sharp drop. And then we're going to see if there's a, a rally towards the high. And are we within five days, within maybe, in this case, it will be Friday or Monday, are we going to have a sharp drop? So here we are. We've got the match Friday, uh, match from Thursday into Friday of last week. It matches that whole August uh, 7th low and retracement with the failure pattern. Where are we today? So this is where we were on that candle. We went to the doji type candle with a nominal new high. We had the sharp pullback yesterday. We had an inside green candle. Now the time says, whoops, this is the one where you should have been going to a new low. So now it says, wait a minute, we might be matching, but we're actually holding a little better because look, at this particular, this live, the MACD is flattening out. It's not great, but the histogram is improving a little bit. Stochastic says there's just no strength here whatsoever. Yes, it's at 40%, and it's rallied since the low that was made under 20%. But this is pathetic. It should be even higher. It should be in leg B and, and moving higher. So I'm kind of worried about this, and I'm thinking when we are talking about when we are looking at patterns that fail at moving averages of importance, for me it's the 14 and the 9 period exponential moving average, if you fail there, that says – that's tremendous resistance to break above. If at any point the Dow is trading at 26,000, ah, man, let me just give it a little room. 26,720 is the number I've been talking about for a little while now. If it goes above that, I have to say, you know what? Maybe there is good news, enough good news to try to at least tackle, get close to the all-time high of 27,306. You barely, you could be there in an eye blink. So this is a very important moment. And I said in the end, I said, we're going to be talking about this just in terms of patterns that have repeated. And yeah, the pattern has repeated up until now. It changes dramatically. If there are maybe another two candles pushing sharply from where we are at 26,471. High today was 26,314. We've got 1,000 points to go before we, we go to the all-time high. I don't know if we're doing it in this phase. I don't think we are. I think we're going to be doing retesting slightly lower lows and slightly lower highs as the theme. So that's what I wanted to do. Now, a couple of questions I've got. I want to get to them right away. Oh, we've got a break coming up. As we go to the break, let me see. Are there any questions? Anybody call back? Yeah, okay. So uh, I wanted to look at, um, I wrote it down, I wrote it down. NVTA for um, one of our callers. Yeah, it's just stuck. I'll be right back. We'll talk about it in a moment and we'll talk about rice and another uh, different stuff. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? 
If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back. So I needed to ask in the den. I just can't find right off. There was a question on a um, shipping stock. Somebody asked if you can do that. In fact, was I was unfamiliar with that one. I know many of them, but it didn't, I don't, didn't quite recognize that one. So well, let's do this. So NVTA, which is NVIDIA Corporation a Diagnostic Genetics, I really think that this is one of those where if you understand the business, diagnostic genetics, um, if you understand the business, and you can get a feeling for the cycles. It, it, Jason, when you get those cycles right, you really, really do well. So I don't want to really mess with you because I got a feeling this is one of those at the 60 at the 18.67 level. I'd be nervous if it broke under 17.50. But if this really just it, it gets if it kicks into gear at any point and it's up two points from here. I think that's going to be the start of another move to the upside. How you played on the short term, I just see nothing right here on the short term at the moment. I, I just don't see anything. I can't do that. So I'm just going to say, for my purposes, um, I'm just going to say, you know best how to play this because you usually get the bigger move. I see a bigger move to the 21s. The timing says to me it's probably going to be a few weeks before it really picks up steam to get into and hold the the 1950 to 20.20 .20 area. So it's the downside I just want to protect. And that's all I can say is that I'd be a little concerned if it took out 18, close under 18. I'd say, you know what, it's probably going to retest the lows, maybe even take out the low. And then you, you're faced with the weekly still being very negative. So that's an FSLY which is fastly is that right fast fastly fastly is trading lousy 24 70 i'm still going to say stay away from this but please remind me it's only in leg a probably a peak a in the monthly chart it's ipo it's one i'd like to keep my eye on let's get to that a little later on i even if we miss some of the move to the upside i think being early here is hazardous to your health and wealth because if it at 24 if it takes out 21 support in the next week it could, it could restart the whole thing over again. I, I don't want that. So I'm just going to say, if it starts to rally, just give me a yell. Yeah, just give me a yell and we'll look at it again. Question I had was, uh, was a star? Oh, yeah, I am a star. Okay, we've looked at star before. Um, this uh, in A, B, C, D, I believe it's a D in the weekly chart, making a cup formation, trading at 12.78. Uh, I'm just going to say that I like this. I like what it's doing. Time is a little bit like FSLY that we were looking at. Whoops. Organic. We don't need that. So let me get out of that. Gee, you know, I don't usually get on my cell phone crank calls. So I don't know what organic is. Okay. So 12.78 up 05. You know, I. Here again, I don't want to see it take out the low even of, of just a few days ago of 12.65. I'm going to say let's, let's leave it for now. It may be today's Thursday. Let's look at it again Monday or Tuesday. I don't mind if it rallies a little bit and you've missed something. Why? Because that weekly chart is still holding very well. But the MACD and Stochastic are weak. So the price is holding okay. I, I'm going to say I'm going to give it a pass. Star is, star is not in my stars right now. And Dryce, which is dry ship, D-R-Y-S. You know, I don't know anything about this. Something happened. This is a stock was trading in the threes. 
was it a takeover talk or something like that? Uh, it's up at the 525. I have no idea. I could make it so that I can see the chart a little bit better. Yeah, something's going on. I think it was a take over, take under, take out, take in. I, it's go, I, I can't do anything with that. But what I do look at is DSX, which is um, Diane Shipping. Gosh, I used to have this note date. A, B, C, D. Bakes a peak, D in the weekly chart. Digestive face, gosh, so many stocks have done this. In the rectangle formation, it keeps bumping up against. So here's what I'm looking at. I'm going to draw this in so that you can look at a chart pattern. And it'll, it'll be very clear to you that there's a resistance level that the three-point is trading D, DSX, trading at 349, down a penny. If you go to the high of the 31st of July at 3.53, if you go to the high of 3.52, uh, on the 21st of August, and then the high of, uh, was it also 5-2? Yeah, 5-2 on the 9th of September. And then you look at the last five days. It's, it's determined to try to break into the, um, into the 357 area. How do you play this? And I do say play it because I don't know how you can actually, it's in the shipping business. It's really tough for me at least to get figures that make sense. Um, the dry bulk. I like the chart. I tell you what I'd like to do. If you're, if you're a longer term investor and you like the shipping area, you could nibble here at three for only nibble. It's at $3.40. Don't don't buy hundred thousand dollars worth of stock. Just buy a tiny little bit at three forty nine. And the reason why is you want to treat it as a stock that refuses to break out. And every time it gets to the Chapman Wave, let me draw this in, the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. It doesn't break out to the upside. It just gets repelled. That's why it's called the repellent zone. But wait a minute. When it comes back down, so right in here is the area that I'm really looking at. And that must be that must be red. So there's your resistance. And it couldn't take it out today. But I would say to you, if you want, you could nibble right here. But my thinking is, I personally, I would say, let's wait. And let's see if it can come back to the lower band, because every time it comes back to the 340 to 335 area, it's getting ready for another bounce. And that's the way I would deal with it. A little bit here if you want. Why? Because if it breaks out and DSX starts to trade at 357, that's another uh, eight, eight cents higher, or six, uh, seven, six, seven, eight cents higher. <clears throat> And it holds there, it's taking out that resistance. All of a sudden, this whole area of the 340s becomes support. So it's a way to do it. Um, my thinking here is that it still says, think about your entry point, a bigger entry point, if it can get to the 341, 356 area. In fact, give me a yell and we'll look at it again. Uh, did anybody ask me? Nobody asked me about it. Nobody asked me about it, but I did it anyway because it's the one that gives me the best clues as to what's going on. All right, next question I had was, could I look at, um, oh, oops, where, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go? Um, SBLK, SBLK is a star bulk carrier's call. So now this is also a oh, bulk, this is a, a much better chart. So it's got the same problem with, with the resistance. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if they're related in any way. Could one be a holding company or the other? I don't know. But they do have very much the same pattern. All right, trading at $11.21. It has a more mature number. Uh, so this is one that institutions will probably be buying. They don't buy the five, but they do buy the $11. So this is making the cup formation. So it's like a cup and handle. No cup and chap and wave, cup and ladle break out, but a cup and handle. Look, there's your cup. There's your handle. It did close it just under it, and then it pulls back, makes a, a handle, a deeper handle than I like. It says even if it breaks out, it's probably going to have to test that again. The weekly is an ABC. It hasn't made a D yet. I like this. It's a lot better. This is the one that I feel more comfortable with at 11.21. Here I'd do the same thing. I'd nibble. I'd probably say if it gets to the 10.60 to 10.53 area, Give me a yell. We'll look at it again to see if it's ready for a bigger move to the upside. Okay, we've got one segment to go. There's a chunk to do. I'll be right back. UNG will do as I get back. 
WNG. That's the natural gas. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman does at 140. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So it's all about natural gas, natural gas trading right now um, at 2.23. I, I, this H pattern says to me, just be a little careful. It's it, the technicals have gotten to the point where it could quite easily have another pop. It's it's a, it's vulnerable to upside surprises, but it's also vulnerable to having to come back to do a lot of testing of the 220 area. I think 220 is going to be key at this particular point. I would just say there's a good chance it's going to rally further if it can get to 2.32. I would say that particularly, you're giving up some, but I'd rather be buying a little bit of strength after this move, and then I'd buy it, but I'd have a really tight stop. And if it does that, it is really quickly to get over 2.34. So, okay, let's do this. I'm going to be doing my show tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it'll be re repeated at, uh, on Friday. It's really important right now for the pattern that we were looking at. Let me just go to this chart here, and then I'm going to go to the one that I show my subscribers every day. This is really important. I don't care what the news is. If there's a break into the 26,720s and it closes in, it's able to do that for two consecutive days, I just have to consider that MACD is going to start to cross positive. But if there's a failure pattern here and we give back a chunk of the gains, uh, we still holding pretty well at 130 up in the Dow, 17 points in the, the S&P, even stronger. But if there is a failure pattern coming into the, uh, Friday's close, going into Sunday evening, Monday, Sunday morning, uh, Monday morning, I'm not sure that this time there's going to be a quick recovery like there was. You realize that last night to today was a 550, almost a 600 point move from one one level to the other. 
from negative to the upside. And uh, and that's all we've been seeing. And then there's a break to the upside and then it comes back into the range. 26,000, 226,000 is the range's key support level. It uses it as a springboard. If it closes under it, one more time, that's just going to be a big negative. So keep that in. This is the way I'm looking at the market. In the meantime, we remain short from the 27, uh, I think it was 181 level, up 27,181 on the Dow, just off the all-time high. And we'll see if that's going to be able to work out. News-driven market. Be careful. Stay tuned. I believe uh, Steve is here. Maybe not. Otherwise, it's, uh, it'll be uh, you got Dave White and then you've got Tom O'Brien today. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 in the morning and will be recorded for the show at have a great day